Welcome to the lecture series of AI. In this lecture, we will briefly discuss how AI works, what is the scope of AI, and what are the applications that uses AI. So let's start our discussion. In this lecture, we will be focusing on AI, how AI works, the introduction to the AI levels, what are the major types of AI, we will also differentiate between AI machine learning and deep learning and then at the end we will discuss some applications of AI. So AI is a branch of computer science which concerns with building intelligent machines. These machines are capable of doing intelligent tasks. So a question arises in our mind that does a machine is capable of doing intelligent tasks or uh, is a machine is uh, capable of doing intelligent tasks? So the answer is yes. There are certain machines, models, systems that are developed and today they are acting like an intelligent machine or intelligent devices. They are working, they are operating, they are functioning like intelligent devices. So how AI is affecting uh, the life, different aspects of life. So according to a study by Kensi Global Institute, AI is estimated to create an additional 13 trillion US dollars of value annually by the year 2030. So AI is already creating tremendous amounts of values into software industries a lot of the value to be created in a future lies and it lies outside the software industries. So in various sectors such as retail, travel, transportation, automotive, materials, manufacturing, there are certain areas which are being treated by AI. So in this figure we are treating that how AI has affected or how AI has evolved in various disciplines of uh, our daily life. So in how many types AI has been divided? So we major mainly divide AI into two broader types. One is the artificial general intelligence and the other one is artificial neural intelligence. The artificial general intelligence it's mainly divided into or uh, it is uh, mainly focused to the smart speaker example a self self driving car or a web search and the artificial neural intelligence it perform us like humans. So what is the scope of AI? It's all about thinking. It's all about thinking. It's about perception. And it's about actions. So the problems which we face, they involve thinking, perception and actions. So the models which are created, they are targeted at thinking, perception and action. So models are built using differential equations, probabilities, the mathematical expressions. They are built using physical and computational simulations. So these models we can use to explain the past, we can predict the future 
and understand the subject and control the world. So these models, these systems are intelligent enough. They can perform certain tasks. They are used to uh, perform certain operations. They are designed to perform certain instructions, to follow certain instructions. So they are developed to perform any task more intelligently and deliberately. So these models are models of thinking. Better models of our thinking, not just the subject matter of the subject, but better models of our own thinking. So the model is targeted at thinking, perception and actions. In order to have a certain model, we have to have representation. So the presentations that support the making of models to facilitate an understanding of thinking, perception and action, these representations are used to develop certain models for a given problem scenario or for a given situation. So in order to solve a problem, in order to solve a scenario, in order to solve a situation, we have to represent in, our, in such a way that the model should have ability of thinking, it should have ability of perception, and should have ability of performing task or actions. So these models are the intelligent models and the models of thinking. So how a problem or a situation or scenario can be represented? So let's discuss a simple problem. It's a very famous uh, well-known problem. The problem of the farmer, the fox, the goose and the grain. Here's the situation. There's a river, a leaky boat that can only carry the farmer and one of his four possessions. So we have, we have to solve the problem. How intelligently this problem can be solved? So at the left side of that figure, a farmer is standing with all his possessions. There is a fox, there is a goose, there is a grain. All of all the four possessions, they should have to travel from one side of the river to the other side of the river. So we have to solve this problem. And at the right side of the problem, there is a solution. So we are we are we are given the problem, and we are give uh, we are also given a solution. So how to solve this problem? We have to think it. So with the help of thinking with the help of perception and with the help of actions we can solve this problem so the problem or situation or scenario is given and to find out the solution we have to find a solution in such a way that all of these four positions should travel to the other bank of the river So artificial intelligence is about constraints which are exposed by representations that support the models targeted to thinking. So it's all about the algorithms which are enabled by constraints which are exposed by representations so that the model targeted thinking, perception and actions. So these algorithms, are, I might call them just as well procedures, algorithms or well procedures or well methods. So the algorithms, the procedures, the methods, they are used to solve a certain problem on the basis of thinking, perception and action. So artificial intelligence, it's all about the constraint that's exposed by representation and it, it must support the models which are targeted to thinking. So these are all the stuff of what artificial intelligence is all about. So it's about the methods, algorithms and representation. So it's something we call in artificial intelligence the generated test. So it's an idea we need to add to our repository of problem for solving methods techniques, procedures and algorithms. So 
so collectively we are collecting all these features parameters factors to solve a given problem intelligently so to generate and test so it will be consisting of generating some possible solutions you have to generate some possible solutions you have to feed them into a box that test them and then out the other side comes most that mostly failures so whenever we are going to solve a problem there uh, there's chance of failure or success so if we are generating some test and we are testing them so it might be a success or it might be a failure so to generate some possible solution and then to apply some reasonable test so we have possibilities we have probabilities of success and failure so it all started with led lovell as the world's first programmer she wrote programs about hundreds of years before there were computers to run them and and in uh, in the era of our 1842 people were really thinking they were hustling of whether the computers could get really smart so they thought that uh, whether our time will ever arrive or time will arise that the computer would get really smart to solve a complex problem so it was hundred of years before the computers were uh, created to run a complex problem so then she said the electrical engine has no pretensions to ordinate anything it can do whatever we know how to order to perform and nevertheless that was the origin of it all so from 1842 to 1952 there was not much happened until alan turing wrote his famous paper which introduced the turing test Turing wrote his paper in 1950, and that was the first milestone after Lady Lovelace's comment in 1842. And then after that paper, a really era had begun in 1960, and the paper was written by Marvin Minsky, that was given the title of Steps Toward Artificial Intelligence. So. it wasn't long after the gym a nearly blind graduate student wrote a program that did symbolic integration so it was a size history of how it started and how it got get evolved by by the passage of time so people got attracted they found some problems found some solutions and the the whole thing that started from 1960 so artificial intelligence is a main umbrella and this umbrella there are many other fields various fields that is the machine learning the deep learning so machine learning is a type of ai that enables a machine to learn from data and deliver predictive models so it works on the testing data and gives solutions and the deep learning is a sub field of machine learning and it's in inspired by the brain structure how the brain works the early form of a neural networks so machine learning and deep learning these are the two sub field uh, of uh, artificial intelligence so we have certain applications where ai is applicable or ai has uh, evolved during certain or recent years so the applications contains the optical character recognition the image processing the creativity computer vision virtual reality automation uh, biological inspired computing and there are many many other fields in which uh, today ai has been applied so today various applications various fields various domains are being treated by the ai so it was a brief and concise introduction about ai 
how the AI is, has been started, what are the main types of AI and the applications of AI. So thanks for your presence. This was the brief introduction about uh, AI. In the next lecture, we will discuss some of the important and main models regarding AI.